Talk Nelson Radio. It's the Talk of Nelson. Sport. The Marco Rugby Roundup. You are the Marco Rugby Roundup, and it's my absolute pleasure to welcome to the show Mitchell Hunt. Mitch is Marco 140. He's played 66 games, scoring 562 points, and is co-captain of the mighty Tasman Marco. Hey, Mitch, welcome to the show. Man, 562 points. So, so that's second only to another first five. You, you may know him, Marco legend Marty Banks. <laughs> so, how's it feel to be in such uh, company as that that uh, that legend? Yeah, it's quite quite a hard case. Uh, obviously, yeah. not really, not really. Um, you know, something as a player, you sort of go out and, and sort of try and beat scoring records, or you know, to to, to achieve something like that. And I suppose more natural with a you know a, a kicker, but um. No, it's a hard case, uh, especially with, you know, me mate Banksy. He yeah. had a year at Tasman and then obviously reconnected, you know, back with him this year down south. So, uh, no, he's a top man and it's uh, good to be sort of sharing, uh, you know, that, that sort of leaderboard just underneath him. So, you had one season with Marty in 2016. So, how did that influence your game? Did you happen to get much off uh, the way that Marty played? I know sometimes he was pretty unpredictable. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I mean, my, really sort of my, my first year at Tasman, I was, I think I played 12 games or something like that, but I was actually at fullback for that first year in, in 2016. And so uh, while I don't think I, I, I didn't start any games at 10 or, or had very sort of few minutes at 10, I was probably more connected with uh, with Rangi, uh, Leon McDonald, and, you know, in around my gameplay and, and my positioning and things like that. So... What's been really cool is, is sort of connecting back with, with Banksy this year down in uh, down in Dunedin. Uh, obviously, we were both playing number ten, and you know we worked together heaps uh, around our around our uh, attacking game, our scrum attack, and and bouncing lots of good ideas off each other. So, you know, po- probably not so much that first year at Tizzy. Uh, obviously, worked around him, but in terms of our learning and things like that, I'd say, you know, probably more this year with the Highlanders is where. You know, we've really connected on that playing level as, as first fives. Uh, Mitchell, that's Les here, mate. Um, the the fact that you and Marty, though, have the same sort of style, you both play very close to the line, you're quite prepared to stay in your channels and, and do your own defence. Uh, you're very similar in that you're both very brave first fives. Uh, is that a fair summation? Oh, I think so. you uh, you know, often uh, as a ten, it's, you get picked on a wee bit in, in, in those channels and that. But um, you know, personally, I, I quite enjoy it. Never sort of shied away in, in that sense. And you know, I, I think that's especially important. Um, you know, for me as a, as a smaller defender, you know, you've got to sort of be able to stand up for yourself, I suppose, and um, and enjoy the sort of the darker patches. Um, you know, I know as we preview teams and that, the, the, you know, the first fives get picked on a fair bit, so. Uh, I think fronting up there is important, um, you know, and, and we both don't mind sort of getting into the dirty, but sometimes when we need to. Yeah, I also think that it's important for the Marco style that you play within attack close to the line rather than from the pocket, which uh, both you and Marty, in my, in my viewpoint, uh, both did. Um, in that 16 squad, your rookie year, who else made a really big impression on you and helped you, you know, carry on with a career that's now up to 66 games for the Marco? Well, I, I guess joining that squad, um, there was still at the time, uh, you know, a good chunk of you know Marco boys that that sort of turned things around in sort of that 2013, 2014 season. Guys like J Lo, um, obviously Banksy. Um, who else did we have? You know, Shane Christie was was still playing then. Uh, even in that following year, I think we had Robbie Melnick back. So. We still had a, a ton of, of those Marco boys that sort of took took the organisation and that team uh, into that sort of that winning realm of, of footy. They played some awesome brands in those 13, 14, 15 years. And, and obviously joining, there was still a handful of those boys. Um, so it was just awesome to, to be a part of that group and, and, and amongst some of those individuals. I think Alex Ainley was maybe the captain for me in that first year. So obviously an original Marco, which is pretty special. 
Yeah, you, could, you couldn't possibly not learn off those guys. Um, but also, though, your, your squad that year had an array of impressive rookies. I'll name a few of them for you. Finlay Christie, Andrew Makalao, your co-captain, mate, Quinn Strange, Shannon Frizzell and Ethan Blackadder, to name a few. So how cool was it to play and begin your journey with players of such calibre? Yeah, well, obviously, there's always sort of a rookie crew. And, and, you know, for those sort of guys, they end up being, you know, some of your best mates um, just just through that fact. You know, you start a, a rugby journey together and you end up quite close, you know, usually naturally uh, around a similar age. And, um, you know, for some of those boys, I, pl- I played some school rugby with, um, which was fantastic. You know, even Davey, only a year older than me, but, you know, still growing up. Um, around them and the athletics and, and obviously junior grade rugby and stuff. So um, very cool and, and also just fantastic to see those boys sort of push on as well, um, you know, showing that, that Tasman now can can provide a pretty healthy pathway, you know, in terms of getting a career. Uh, and that's great now, which we're seeing how many careers are coming out of, um, you know, out of Tasman. So to see those boys kick on and, and, and make it all that side is... Um, pretty awesome really. Mitch you went on to play for the Crusaders for four campaigns you played 45 games so actually not uh, far off 50 caps Uh, but in 2020 you decided to move south to the Highlanders so talk us through the thinking behind that move. Yeah obviously for for probably the the majority of my time in Christchurch was sort of bench minutes or um, you know replacement minutes and things like that and um, you know, I've sort of said it a couple of times before. I just, uh, I really wanted to, to test myself just to see if if I if I could or couldn't sort of handle the level of, of Super Rugby. Um, you know, and, and if it was to be that, you know, maybe I went overseas in a, in a couple of years post that, that Crusaders experience. You know, I, I think that question would have eaten away at me for a very long time if I didn't give myself a crack or an opportunity to, to test myself properly. Um and I guess that was really the underlining sort of decision to, to head south, to test, to sort of fight for a, a starting spot in Super Rugby and and, uh, and see how I could handle things. And have you enjoyed that uh, role of absolutely running the cutter for a Super Rugby team? Yeah, it's been great. It's, um, you know, there is nothing different or, you know, nothing better than than actually getting out there and doing it and gaining that experience and, you know, I'm very comfortable at that level now um, around, you know, running the game and making decisions and things like that. And, you know, it's great to be able to now come back with, with those sort of feelings of confidence and, and help the group here at Tasman as well. So, um, you know, I think the time down there has been, been valuable, um, a ton of learning and a ton of experience and, and confidence out of it too. And not a bad halfback. <laughs> no, well, that's, that's the other thing there, you know. Awesome guy to have round. Yeah. Aaron Smith. Um, a great yes. leader too. Yeah, so uh, last season you and Quinn Strange were given the co-captaincy of the Marco. So does captaincy or leadership come easily to you? I don't know. I, I guess it does a wee bit. I think it's always sort of been in a, in, a, in a bit of my personality. You know, I captained a few younger age grade stuff and, and the Nelson College first 15 and... and potentially a few rep teams growing up and I don't know if that's just sort of part part of my personality that it's always sort of been there um, but it's uh, you know obviously pretty special to to sort of have that that badge here at Tasman and you know being homegrown to to finally sort of or to captain the side that, that I grew up watching um, you know I, I think it's pretty cool. Excellent and your style what who do who do you model your captaincy style off? Um, I don't think there's necessarily one one person. It's it's probably changed a little bit in the last few years with with just growth and understanding. You know, r- rugby's it's it's these these sort of multiple styles of leadership. You know, you've you've got to make decisions on your own, or you know, obviously with Quinny out on the field. But then, you know, we have a really good leadership group and and you know our coaches and and our other player leaders, which we we all make decisions off the field around the team and the training and the, and the content of what we do. So while there's captains, there's, there's so many other guys that influence our decisions and, and influence the team as well. So there's, there's a couple of different ways about it. But, um, yeah, I don't think there's any one way. Um, you know, we're very collaborative. You know, we work together and, 
and obviously, you know, myself and Connie would make those final final calls on the field. Mitch, a difficult season last season with the COVID disruptions. Uh, 2021, well, it ended pretty close, didn't it? No cigar going down to Waikato in the final. So have you moved on from that? And, and what's the mindset going into the 2022 season? Yeah, obviously a little bit of a roller coaster for us in terms of our season. Uh, you know, potentially losing a couple of games that maybe we shouldn't have lost, um, you know, through our own doing. Uh, and then I guess a little bit of the same in, in that final, you know, a, a few mistakes which led to some pretty easy tries out of them, uh, which which is a bit of a heartbreaker. But, you know, it does fuel the fire to, to be better this year. And a lot of those younger boys that had those experiences now are into sort of their second or third years, which which means it's now time for them to step up you know, as, as experienced young guys and sort of show the new rookies how to do things. Um, but it's, you know, you, you always have those sort of moments in the back of your mind, but obviously you want to focus forward and, and just be better. And, you know, there's a new competition to, to try and sort of go out and win this year. Yeah, well, that segues nicely into what's coming up this weekend, an opening round match against Southland. Um, the team's been named. You're not in it due to injury. Is there anything behind that, mate? Are you just resting up? Um, yeah, just just having a little bit of um, just a bit of neck trouble, uh, which is sort of giving me a few sort of referring pains up into the head and that. So just um, just taking a few extra weeks for a bit of precaution, um, checking a few extra boxes to to make sure I'm all good. Um, just don't want to sort of you know rush anything and, and put the body under under a bit of stress. So I'm still training with with the team, which is great. Still out on the paddock and, and helping out on that front. So uh, yeah, ho- hopefully a few weeks and. Um, I'm back into things. Excellent. Well, your health is most important, Mitchell. Um, look after yourself, and we want to see you back for the latter part of the season when you're ready. But uh, a Sunday's game, we're playing for the Clark Dermody Cup. Now, that's obviously special to the team. Uh, what are the team's chances of successfully defending it? Oh, I think good. It's it's obviously a uh, cup coming in the last couple of years to, to sort of represent... Um, you know, obviously, Derms and, and, and his involvement in the two unions, you know, as a, as a player, you know, uh, down south and then, you know, a, a great coach here. Uh, it's cool. He's been in and around the camp for a couple of days uh, today, um, which is great to sort of see his face again. And, uh, you know, in terms of the game, um, we obviously had a, a good win in the, in the preseason against them last week. Uh, and, the, and the cool thing is there's um, some easy, easy fixes, which... Uh, I think will go a long way to, to putting some more points on the scoreboard for us. So I think if, if, if our boys have, um, you know, really nailed their sort of homework and prep, taking those messages on from last week, uh, you know, I think we're in for a really good day, uh, hopefully a good one too. Yeah, and it's interesting that Marty Banks, Banks makes a reappearance uh, <laughs> on, on Lansdowne Park up against Campbell Parata. Uh, you've given Campbell some advice, I guess. Oh, bits and pieces. Campbell's doing really well, and and uh, you know had a, had a great few um, preseason games already. You know he's a sharp player, and um, you know he hasn't had a, a ton of time. Um, you know, obviously with you know me me playing a lot in the last few years, and and so I'm actually really excited for him to get an opportunity early this season to to find his feet, chuck his own sort of mark on the the ten jersey, and um, you know a pretty awesome game and. Obviously, a cool match up for him too. Uh, you know, matching up with with Banksy as well, and you know, is that sort of player. I'm sure he's looked up to him in the past. So, uh, Campbell, I'm sure, will be trying to trying to get one over Banksy. Well, Mitch, uh, we wish you all the best of luck with your recovery and, and good luck to the team. Thank you very much for joining us on the show, and we look forward to uh, following you throughout the season. Awesome. Cheers, fellas. Good to talk. <laughs> yeah, fins up, Mitchy. Cheers. Thank you. There you go, Les, uh, Mitchell Hunt. And yeah, when I think of Mitchell Hunt, I, I guess the word that comes to my mind is progression. You know, he talks about that belief in seeing if he can do it. And when I first saw him on the Marco pitch, you know, there were elements of excellence, but some of the game was a bit rusty. But we've just seen progression year after year, and now we've got a pretty solid number 10 and who's playing good super rugby. Yeah, I think he's very coachable. That must be 
one of the things that delights his coaches. He he uh, he's a learner, listener, and a learner. Uh, look, I I use the word brave in my interview yeah. with him. With one yeah. of my questions, I should say. Um, and bravery is is a real characteristic of Mitch. He yeah. has no fear. Uh, he he plays so close to the line and and defends his channel so well. To my way of thinking, he's the best first five that ever played for the Marco. Well, there you go. And you know, he said himself, "Look, I, I'm a small guy, but he does get in and defend too." Oh, he's, he, he's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah. So good luck to you, Mitchell. Absolutely, Mitchell Hunt, the Marco co-captain. The Marco Rugby Roundup. News, sport, events and more. It's the Talk of Nelson. Talk Nelson Radio.